Hi guys, uh, today I'd like to show you how to connect uh, Google Earth Studio uh, and get the 3D data from camera to the Cinema 4D so uh, we can easily compose whatever 3D scene we want with, uh, uh, with the data we've got from Google Earth. So it's good for things like, you know, you've got a camera flying over the city and suddenly there are some buildings growing from the city and stuff like that. So uh, for that we will need uh, Google Earth Studio, which is currently in beta, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you don't have access, uh, there is a link to ask, ask for, for it and uh, that's it basically. Uh, we will need uh, Adobe After Effects and we will need obviously Maxon's Cinema 4D. I've got a release 21, but I guess this should work even on older or, or newer versions of it. So let's learn how. Okay, so as been mentioned, we need Google Earth Studio. Uh, for this to to get the, the 3d data of our map let's say uh, i've chosen my city berno uh, you probably noticed i'm not a native speaker so you probably notice my accent so this is my city in the very heart of europe and there is a nice castle in the center of it called spielberg so uh, we have a camera set up in a Google Earth Studio, which actually flies somehow in and then rotates around the hill and Spielberg itself. Um, how to do that? It's for probably another tutorial, uh, but Google Earth Studio, they've got a pretty well uh, managed uh, help system. So this is not the scope of the tutorial. If you don't know how to do that, I recommend you to check on Google Earth help. Uh, anyways, we've got a we've got a this. It has uh, 750 frames, and uh, basically we can uh, render this right away. We can go to the uh, the pictures, so we can uh, we can build uh, 2D animations kind of from those. But the thing is that uh, together with the with the pictures, we need some 3D data to make. Cinema 4D understand that uh, how the camera is actually placed in the 3D space. So uh, first we start to placing some points with which will be our kind of references. So uh, let's do the points in a in a corners of this hill or a park. I'll right click and set track point. Name it as this is northwest part. Uh, this is northeast. Uh, southeast. And somewhere here, let's say southwest. And just by the way, there is a really nice pub right here. Uh, it belongs to some guy who has a, had a flat there and just decided to just make a make a make a pub from it. Uh, and I really like it. You can grab beer, go outside to the park to drink it. It's completely allowed in Czech Republic, by the way, which is nice. So pub maybe, so we can show it later on in our 3D and the castle itself. So let's say my goal will be to build a new like high-rise building in the very center of it, in a yard. So again, set one track point here and let's say this would be a castle northwest. Castle Southwest. So we've got a few of the track points now. When I move the camera, up, you see this those stick uh, with the with the ground. Uh, by default, they are the height is is placed on the on the, on the ground, whatever height of the ground is on that uh, on that point. And if they are like see 
that I can't see those inside usually here because they are obstructed by the 3D building, which is completely okay. So uh, let's say we've got our references points, that's more than enough, I'd say. Uh, one more thing which is super important to do is uh, to select one of those. Let's say uh, this one. Uh, go to this menu and make it set as local origin and now it's marked by the small ring around same color as, as, as the dots itself so it's blue in our case uh, and this seems as nothing like important but it actually is if you don't do that uh, the resulting coordinates will be like um, uh, global so therefore like uh, some insane numbers like uh, millions and stuff like that and there are issues with, uh, with the 3D uh, with the Cinema 4D uh, then so this is like even though it seems like a small step it's actually a giant leap in our project so we've got it set it up so let's go to the render and uh, frame 0 to 750 uh, let's do just HD for a sake of uh, time here. Uh, the Google Earth uh, logo has to be there, so I don't know, let's say there. And 3D tracking data, this is super important as well. So we choose After Effects and this again we have to switch to local coordinates by switching this that would mean that the point which is somewhere here will be actually our, our zero point uh, not some code uh, not not some word coordinate which will be like a nonsense after afterwards map style yeah we don't want any like uh, everything or icons or whatsoever so clean uh, textures uh, are high and we can render Oh, uh, so let me name it. Berk, Berk. And the destination will be, uh, let's say, here. Yeah, view files, that's correct. And let's it start. So it renders and we will speed up this process for our for a sake of time. Okay, so we've got the results from um, Google Earth ready in this folder. It contains footage itself. I don't know if it can be switched for PNG files or something without the compression. I don't think so, so we have to live with JPEGs here. Uh, plus we've got uh, this script here which is super important so let's go to the After Effects and instead of importing the files as a, as a footage we go to script and we run the script so select this one and it does all the magic and the most important part is that it, it does all the magic in the 3D kind of space so uh, if you check the camera it has 3d coordinates which is and uh, those uh, those like anchor points as well which is super important for uh, for cinema cinema 4d that that's what we need also as you can see those numbers are like uh, maybe tens maybe hundreds maybe some thousand but they are not insane and that's at the beginning as I said we need the local coordinates this is why so if you don't do the local coordinates in Google Earth those numbers here will not be like hundreds or thousands but like millions and we are even though it looks basically the same in After Effects it's uh, it's insane to work with with that in in uh, Cinema 4D after that so we need numbers like that like hundreds thousands something like that and we know we are good so okay so that's our footage uh now we have to imp uh, export it to cinema 4d so the exporter says that some 2d layers found doesn't matter that's okay uh, it asks us if we want to uh, transfer uh, text layers to the shapes or preserve as text 
I prefer text because I would delete those anyways those are like huge I don't know why those are that big but anyways so let's preserve text uh, where to save it Spielberg.c4d that's fine so let's save it and that's the first part of work in After Effects so let's switch to Cinema 4D now okay so in Cinema 4D we simply open the the file generated by After Effects and we've got something like this so as you can see we've got a uh, some pretty huge text there the camera the plane is completely insanely turned so we have to fix all of that to to get a, like some kind of scene we can work with so at first the text so we've got uh, those extrudes so let's search for extrude select all layers and put this to zero so we don't need to extrude those and then we've got a text text yeah which which are the text layers itself and let's say I change the size to 0 0.01 here yep and uh, maybe even smaller 0 0.03 and um, maybe extra ball so we can see something yep so as you can see I've got those uh, here is the pop southeast southwest northeast northwest those are the boundaries of our hill and here is the castle castle northwest northeast southwest southeast so if I change the view yeah it's like this so as you can see this is important that's what we kind of wanted so let me select the castle let's say we want this to be the castle will be kind of red and we want those to be points yeah so now we've got our castle points and the boundaries will be i don't know circles maybe and the color will be ooh, oh, let's say a bluish yep so now we've got something but another issue is that it's not properly it's it's completely rotated i'm not sure why i think that's because it gets like a global coordinates of the of the globe so which is actually a sphere i guess but anyways we we preferably want this to be aligned to our like world axis to be able to model properly and whatsoever because this is insane to operate so what i do if you check to the to the main container of it it has zero coordinates but all the rest has like those here for in my case for Brno it's 140 10 77 and some 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 uh, numbers behind it so what I do here I basically shift click to create a cube under the one of those move the cube to the very top put everything under the cube and set cube to zeros and it rotates it somehow yeah we are close but not there uh, we should be the axis should be like this so this is y this is x and this is z axis so let's put this to the very center of it yeah make a sense and now let's turn it the way that we 90 degrees um, I believe hold on and this is not zero no it's not okay so let's put it to the very center so again y x like that 
and if we rotate it 90 degrees yep. so how does it look now yeah so we've, we've got our y on the top uh, the plus x goes to the east minus x goes to the west plus z goes to the north minus z goes to the goes to the south so that's okay we don't need our cube anymore so let's delete it and it's properly placed somehow um, so now this is kind of rotated somehow but it doesn't matter really i use those things like um, as, a, as a reference only so we have to keep it this way if we change this it means that camera changes as well because you can see we've got a like a each keyframe is a keyframe of the camera so they are like mm, uh, baked to the to the animation itself so we do, we we do we shouldn't move or turn this so i'll name it as a 3d references container and maybe create a layer reference but put everything under it and lock it so now we are not sure we we will not move anything so yeah we've got we've got it placed properly and now and as you can see we've got a also like a y axis with uh, because those it's a hill right so this is on the top top of the hill and you can see this is like a little bit below because it's on the beginning of the hill and this is the castle on the top of it so it seems we've got a our coordinates are, are okay let's say uh, but what about our scale when I create a cube here so this is two meters cube two by two by two and it's obviously too big because two meters will be like this will be like 50 let's say so what I do I usually create such cube uh, make it x-ray check from the top and scale it so let's say it would fit to somehow to the castle itself oh, come on yeah like this fine and from the map or from some other other scale let's say we know that the distance between northwest corner of the of the castle and southwest no corner is let's say 50 meters but in our case this is just 0 0.363 meters so what we can do now we can go, go to edit scale project and say that our 3.363 meters are actually 50 meters okay and yeah we are there so it's um i probably have to uh, it disappears that's because uh, it's uh, the project set to uh, different camera clipping so it's under mode project and instead medium I would say large yeah so now the camera clipping is set for the large objects so rather like tens of meters than centimeters and it works fine so we can delete our cube so this is it so let's save this project um now let's build something inside the castle let's let's actually build something simple let's say that there will be hmm, let's say there will be uh, a site growing from the castle center like some kind of chimney i don't know 
maybe like this yep so it seems good and let's extrude it in y axis obviously yeah so let's say this is what we want to grow there uh, so that's our building so now what I do is actually to switch back to the uh, Google Art Studio, create a new blank project. Uh, make it bigger and just one frame. So we've got a top view of the castle. I usually use also field of view of the camera and set it to like some smaller number, like five maybe. Um, so we've got a top view of the castle and we will use this as a reference for other objects around that are casting or, the, or receiving shadows. So we've got this, uh, it will be just one frame, that's more than enough for us. North is on the top, so that's okay. Render, okay. I don't know. Reference top. Okay, select folder, yeah. Number top. Okay, save changes, uh, it renders, it's just one f or two frames, so it should be relatively fast. Yep, it's done. So, now reference top. So we've got uh, our Cinema 4D file here, so let's create texture folder, so the Cinema will be able to find the textures there automatically and let's use this one doesn't matter really uh, so um, now from the top view I can go to mode I believe is one under view settings back and image and yep and we need to make this way bigger. Yeah, maybe like this. Make it transparent a bit. I'm oh, sorry. So let's position it properly. So we've got our reference. Um, and now to get the proper shadows, I'll draw actually the building itself somehow. So let's draw it. I'm not saying we have to be super precise here, just like this. And another one, maybe like this. Okay, and let's say this is enough for our purpose, so let's extrude it, I don't know, 10 meters for now, we will see later on. So we've got our castle there, somehow, um, so now we need to um, adjust a bit the lights and stuff like that, so for that uh, let's create a new uh, background object and in materials we don't need those those are actually for those texts actually so we create new default material and as a color channel we load the images uh, from that where is it 
here from that real footage open no we don't want to copy so it's absolute location but when we click animation and calculate yeah it took 750 frames so we are good here so if i provide background uh, it does nothing because it doesn't like update with the, with the each screen but if i do render and render interactive render region you see we are somehow there so we got our like a skyscraper going from the from the building itself uh, so now let's use the same material for let's name this castle shadow receiver let's uh, use the same texture and we have to set the texture here as uh, frontal um, so if I now render it it looks pretty much okay unless we've got the shadows and stuff on that shadow receiver as well so uh, we have to put a composing tag and composite background yeah it looks better and as you can see we should be a little bit higher here so it's not 10 meters it's actually more and like, let's try to eyeball here yeah looks fine or less it yep okay that looks uh, at least decent well not here but those are the details we have to fix in a in a uh, after effects afterwards um, so yeah this is uh, this is it for now uh, the last thing I'd like to set up are, uh, are the lights so uh, now we are in direction from the lights light goes so let's create actually I think that physical sky might work if we set properly the daytime and the, and the, uh, and the date and uh, location and everything that might work as well what I usually do is uh, infinite light just like yeah it's what it says uh, we have to scale this to see the how it or where it points and kind of simulate it so probably somehow like this let's create new material the white one and put it under the building so we can see okay and we rotate it so the light goes from the right that's fine uh, the light color is a little bit different it's like a little bit reddish yeah like that and the shadows okay we have to turn the shadows here I do usually ray traced because the shadows from uh, from uh, the uh, Google Earth are pretty like kind of bluish and 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 hard uh, plus we can do environment and make the shadows a bit brighter so again the shadow color is this in our case and I don't know let's experiment here a bit 50 no more 80 okay we need to make it brighter it's too bright so maybe 50 now yeah yeah it could be it so okay we've got our scene I guess so now the camera goes in and it starts to rotate so let's say that our building will not be visible here and it will grow slowly as the camera rotates let's say here so that's the standard thing it grows it's small grows up and up and up and that's pretty much it and also I forgot my favorite part the pup 
So let's make a, another like a uh, cube here to the pub where we, we are. Yeah. So this will be like a kind of imagine it as a as a kind of uh, arrow that's pointing to the pub, for example. So you've got another reference point, so it works somehow. Okay, we are almost ready here. The thing is that uh, at first we don't want those um, those texts here, so obviously I have to unlock the layer, and those has to be turned off for 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 rendering. Yeah, it's not there anymore. Or maybe maybe we can hide this in this face even for our viewport. Yep, that's okay. Um, and also the background we don't need to render it, so I can hide it. So this is the resulting image we want. And yeah, so I guess we are there almost. So let's render it. That's okay. Save to PNG. That's fine. And it render. And this could be pretty quick actually, since the scene itself is uh, simple. Uh, but for sake of time, I'll speed it up again. Okay, our render is done and we are back in After Effects, so we don't need all those layers with the, with the texts and, and anchor points and so on. We just basically need, we actually don't need even camera, but doesn't matter really. We need this Spielberg, uh, the original footage from Google Earth, so it's there. And let's import our files rendered by Cinema 4D. So it's under render. So the first file, yeah, it's PNG sequ sequence. That's good. Import. Okay, and back to Spielberg. And let's put it above. So, yep, and it's there. So as you can see, it now grows. And there is also a slight shadow here and stuff like that. So it's properly placed. Uh, also, if we zoom in, here is our uh, my favorite pub part. So yeah, here, somewhere here it is. Um, so that's it. Uh, maybe some adjustments here, like uh, obviously I was not that precise in getting in uh, uh, creating that surrounding area, it's it, uh, the roof is not flat, for example, so the shadow is not 100% correct here, and I'm missing uh, missing a part of the of the roof here. So um, depends on your precision. If you are precise enough uh, in a 3D modeling with the roof and everything, it would be great. If not, uh, I can copy this layer, put it above, and actually create a create a mask and adjust those details here and there by using masks. And this is it. So uh, you can adjust more masks and so on, and it's done. So this is it. So I guess it's not a rocket science. It's not that special, but there are a few steps you really need to follow. Otherwise, the results are not that good, or um, uh, there could be issues with the uh, with the importing proper camera movements and stuff like that 
I've spent several hours finding such solution uh, because I haven't found any like proper description anywhere. So uh, those results are based on my testing. So maybe you will find better way to go actually. So if you do, don't hesitate to, to let me know below. Thanks for watching.